Right now, those who fish will soon be able to carry firearms with them while out on the water. We'll take a look at the rule and hear from some local anglers what they think about it. Also, as we approach the Democratic National Convention, we'll hear from a Democratic strategist on what it'll take for Kamala Harris to officially secure the nomination. And later, a new study is shedding light on how too much Internet use can affect a teen's brain, how the Senate is taking steps to protect kids online. It's all ahead on News 3 Now at 6. People fishing in Wisconsin will soon be able to carry firearms after a rule banning them was rescinded by the state. It follows a lawsuit brought by gun rights advocates challenging it. Our Merrill Hubbard talked to fishermen about the ban being lifted. The DNR repealed a rule that now allows fishermen to carry firearms on the water. But after talking to many people in the Madison fishing community, they say they didn't know there was a rule to begin with. I'm not sure why this rule change was necessary. DNS Bay and Tackle has been here for over 40 years. And the owner says that firearms while fishing has been flying under the radar. Before this law was passed, I don't think that anybody knew that you couldn't carry a gun while you fish. I just figured open carry, you could open carry in your boat or wherever you were but obviously that wasn't the case, at least at that time. The DNR changed the rule in response to pressure from the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty that advocated for people's Second Amendment right. But some people don't see the point. I go out to fish to relax and enjoy nature. I do not see a need to carry a gun while I fish, but I guess if it helps people feel comfortable, then good for them. You know, I mean, everybody's got a right to bear arms and protect themselves. Not that that should happen while you're fishing, but, you know, you never know. Other Madison fishers are unbothered. It's an open carry state, and as long as people are responsible and not being, you know, out of hand and doing dumb stuff, I ain't got a problem with it. While the repeal does allow people to carry firearms on the water, it does not allow people to use those firearms to fish. Reporting in Madison, I'm Merrill Hubbard, News 3 Now. Now to continuing coverage out of Amherst in Portage County, where a man who allegedly shot at Sauk County deputies is still in a standoff with law enforcement. Police say it involves 32-year-old Jeffrey Miller, the suspect in an attempted homicide of an officer in Baraboo on Tuesday. Police say they're working to remove Miller from a home there. They've cut power to area buildings. A driver is dead after a rollover crash in Beloit very early this morning. Police say the crash happened on Risher Street at about 2.30 this morning. The driver, they say, crashed into a tree in the area. The city of Beloit is not releasing the identity of the driver at this time. The Wisconsin State Patrol is providing accident reconstruction for that investigation. In Janesville, police have arrested a 31-year-old Milwaukee man for allegedly driving from officers this morning. It happened when police responded to a traffic complaint a little after midnight. When they found the vehicle, they say they were almost hit by it. The vehicle eventually crashed and the suspect reportedly took off running from the scene. He was later tracked down and arrested inside a residence. Turning now to weather, let's check your first warm forecast. Here's Chief Meteorologist Alex Harrington out on the weather patio. A beautiful evening. Oh yeah, indeed. We've got a nice little table of here, some benches behind me. It's a perfect evening to be out in the patio. Take your dinner out, grill out, or if you're going out downtown or what have you outdoors, it's going to be a wonderful evening for that. Then the temperatures are really going to start to increase again. We're sitting right around upper 70s, right around 80. Most of our temperatures over the next 10 days are going to feature upper 80s, some cases near 90. And the heat index values, the feels like factor, with that late July, early August humidity, it's going to feel like the lower 90s across southern Wisconsin. Nothing like that right now. Pretty picture here at our Edgewater Skycam. 79 in Madison, dew point 60. A touch of that humidity out there. We'll dip all the way down to 59, so comfortable night. Probably could still have the windows open. A little patchy fog to start off your Saturday morning. Temperatures, as I mentioned, upper 70s, lower 80s. It's popular across all of southern Wisconsin. Just a touch below normal for this time of year, but we're going to go above normal by Saturday. I lowered Sunday's highs, but we've got storm chances that are going to increase on Sunday along with the humidity levels. Coming up in Maine weather, I'm going to show you when those storms may enter southern Wisconsin. All right, Alex, thank you. We are now less than a month away from the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. That's where we're expecting Vice President Kamala Harris to formally accept the Democratic nomination to appear at the top of the ballot. Now, we spoke with a Democratic strategist about what it'll take to roll out Vice President Harris, who was not at the top of the ticket during the primaries. She has been out there. She is somebody who is known to the voters. Uh, she has been a, a, a vice president who has been out not only campaigning, but somebody who has been out there uh, promoting the accomplishments of this administration. 
Vice President Harris has won the backing of a majority of delegates already, but candidates wanting to challenge her nomination have until Saturday to submit paperwork. And today, local leaders and community members are voicing their support for Vice President Harris. Earlier at the Capitol, Senate Democratic Leader Diane Hesselbein and Madison Mayor Satya Rhodes-Conway say they're endorsing Vice President Harris because of her stances on reproductive rights, LGBTQ plus freedoms, and strengthening the middle class. We have folks that are knocking doors every day and we have folks that are on the phones that are doing the work to make sure that we have a strong campaign here in Wisconsin, not just to elect Kamala Harris president, but also to reelect Senator Tammy Baldwin and to make sure the Democrats up and down the ballot are elected here all across Wisconsin. They also voice concerns over the ideas proposed by Republicans through the Project 2025 document. Last month, residents in Monona received a survey designed to help city leaders find the best path forward with the city's budget. The survey asked whether residents would support a $3 million referendum to maintain city services and cover increasing costs for the next five years. 59% of those surveyed said they would support a referendum. 30% said they would not. With this data, the city council plans to meet in August to consider putting the referendum on the ballot in November. A new study shedding light on how too much internet usage can affect a teenager's brain. This as the Senate takes steps forward on two bipartisan measures to protect adolescents online. Brian Abel reports on the study's findings and the path forward. Teens diagnosed with internet addiction often struggle with muddled attention spans. A new study in the journal PLOS Mental Health could explain why. Neuroimaging uncovered disrupted signals between brain regions that are important for controlling attention and working memory. The findings are similar to the ABCD study by Professor of Psychology Dr. Chandra Sripada and others, who says understanding the Internet's impact on our brains is an important first step towards battling potential addiction. If you know what the markers of vulnerability are, you can prevent an individual um, by intervening in the interim you can prevent an individual from developing the full-blown addiction syndrome. In Washington, the Senate waging its own battle, taking steps this week towards passing two bipartisan bills aimed at protecting kids online. Predators can exploit or target kids. And for kids who struggle with mental health, social media can magnify their anguish. One bill focuses on improving privacy. The second requires social media companies to provide better protections for minors. That includes giving guardians more control and limiting certain features like autoplay. The technology companies have brainiacs that they've hired. That's all on one side. And on the other side, you've got a teenager. And the competition is not fair. In Washington, I'm Brian Abel reporting. The White House is also stepping up its efforts this week. A task force recommended parents keep open communication lines with children about social media, set expectations for what kids can watch, how long they can use devices, and make sure they have the correct privacy settings. Well, still ahead at 6, why Boar's Head is recalling thousands of pounds of deli meats. Plus, there's promising news in the fight against dementia, what a new study on a shingles vaccine is showing. Stay with us. Watching News 3 Now at 6. Brought to you by Gruber Law Offices. Seriously injured? Call Gruber Law Offices. Our team is available 24 7 to help, and there's no fee until we win. Gruber Law Offices, proud partner of your Milwaukee Brewers. One call, that's all. Your child's confidence stems from learning and seeing clearly. At Shopco Optical, our professional team will help your child start their journey of confidence by providing quality eye care in a warm and comfortable environment. Schedule their back-to-school exam at shopco.com. Get an 11% rebate on everything at Menards. Check out our selection of Dakota vanities. They feature generous interior storage and come in a variety of styles. Get this sliding barn door vanity for $168.99 after rebate. Put the finishing touches on your bathroom with a faucet from Moen. Get this mica spot-resistant brush nickel faucet for $59.98 after 11% rebate at Menards. America's number one home improvement retailer for customer satisfaction. Save big money at Menards. 
At Machinery Row Bicycles, you'll find bicycles to quality electric e-bikes from Trek, Electra, Felt, Giant, and more. Trek offers the best-selling e-bike in America, Trek Verve Plus, under $2,500. At Machinery Row Bicycles, you'll find fat e-bikes, mountain e-bikes, road e-bikes, bike path e-bikes, and more. Free services included. The place to shop for your new e-bike is Machinery Row Bicycles, the most beautiful bicycle store in the world. Everyone's vision needs are unique. At Shopco Optical, our caring team of professionals will work with you to ensure your vision is at its best. Shopco Optical can help you experience every detail, color, and breathtaking sight in clarity. New 3 Now, first warm weather is taking you beyond the barometer. Email your weather-related questions to firstwarn at wisctv.com and our team of meteorologists will give you the answers on News 3 Now, live at 4. You're watching News 3 Now at 6, moving forward. There is some promising news in the fight against dementia. A new study says the latest shingles vaccine may also help delay the illness. Researchers found people who received that vaccine lived on average 164 additional days without dementia compared to those who got the previous shingles vaccines. That's according to a study published in the journal Nature Medicine. The CDC already recommends everyone 50 and older get the shingles vaccine. It's two doses given a few months apart. The degree to which it's delaying dementia is on the same order of these new, very expensive medications for Alzheimer's disease that you don't give until you start to develop symptoms. So this is something that if you can just altogether prevent and delay any symptoms much more cheaply, easily, that's a really big promising uh, change. And ways to delay dementia include controlling your blood pressure, maintaining a healthy weight, and also don't smoke. CBS News medical contributor Dr. Celine Gounder says another recently discovered risk factor for dementia is wildfire smoke, so stay indoors or wear a mask if you are in an affected area. Boar's Head is recalling more than 200,000 pounds of ready-to-eat deli meats due to a potential listeria contamination. That recall includes all of Boar's Head's liverwurst products and a variety of hams, bologna, salamis, and bacon. Consumers are warned to look for the establishment number EST12612. That's it's EST 12612. 34 people in 13 states have gotten sick. The potential outbreak has been linked to 33 hospitalizations and even two deaths. Listeria symptoms include fever, muscle aches, headache, confusion, loss of balance, and convulsions. If you have a recalled product, the item should be immediately thrown out or returned. A battle over the origin of flaming Hot Cheetos has broken out into a fiery legal fight. Richard Montanez says he invented the spicy red snack flavor more than three decades ago while he was a factory janitor. However, Frito-Lay, the company that makes Cheetos, denies the claim. Yesterday, Montanez, who over the years rose through the ranks with Frito-Lay and PepsiCo, filed a 62-page defamation lawsuit accusing executives of those companies of lying about his creation. Officials at PepsiCo and Frito-Lay have not commented on the lawsuit. Still ahead, the DNR gives out a warning to boaters this weekend. Plus, if you've noticed the skies a little hazier, you're not alone. Look at the wildfires that are raging to our west. And what's the weather looking like for the weekend? Alex rejoins us, his complete forecast, when we come back. Sup? You need some windows? Hi! Oh, you need windows, yes you do! Hey folks, you call the experts? Increase your curb appeal and save big this summer with free installation on windows, siding, doors, and roofing. Plus, no interest for five years. And we'll get it done Feldco fast. Free installation ends Wednesday. Call now. Call 866 for Feldco. They don't clock out at 5 or care if it's the weekend. That means we keep working, too. So when Eric Hovde says that farmers don't work hard, that pisses me off. Think of farming. Look at the old physical toil that it would take on your body. Now you're dr largely driving around a tractor. A California banker criticizing Wisconsin farmers for not working hard? We know what that is. Eric Hovde, what the hell's wrong with this guy? I'm Tammy Baldwin, and I approve this message. Dad, are you certain this is going to work? Nothing to it. Are you for imprint certain? 
Certainty matters. Like the certainty of 4imprint, your home for high-quality promotional gear, including exclusive items and brands they love. Printed perfectly and guaranteed to arrive on time. To wow your clients, nail your next event, or inspire your team, check out 4imprint.com. 4imprint for certain. Watch this. It's all 100% real. Witness what happens to this woman's bags under her eyes in an actual time lapse in just minutes. Nothing has been doctored or tampered with. The very real problem will disappear before your eyes and hers with a revolutionary topical formulation that works in just minutes. And the effects will last for hours and hours. Over 1 million people are using this topical technique to visually reduce puffiness and bags. It works on sagging jowls, even fine lines and wrinkles on the face and forehead. Introducing Plexiderm. In just minutes, you can restore and beautify your face, even look years younger. And the look will last all day or all evening. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. I'm just in love with the mirror right now. Jump on board and say yes to this amazing $14.95 Prove It Plexiderm trial. You'll see why our customers describe Plexiderm with three words. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Order right now. We'll pay your shipping. Operators are standing by. News 3 Now at 6. The DNR says it has detected the emerald ash borer now in all 72 Wisconsin counties. Recent tests in Burnett County, which was the last county to detect the insect, confirmed its presence. The emerald ash borer is native to Asia. It was discovered in the United States in southeastern Michigan in 2002, and officials believe the beetle has been moving around the country by hitching rides on firewood. It was first discovered in Wisconsin in 2008 in Ozaki County. The emerald ash borer larvae bore into ash trees, killing them. The DNR expects that the beetle will eventually kill more than 99% of Wisconsin's white, black, and green ash trees. Well, if you think the air looks a bit hazy, it's probably not your imagination. Wildfires are sending out smoke that's blanketing large swaths of the U.S. today. The result is air quality alerts in multiple states now. In California, evacuation orders are in place due to the Park Fire. More than 100,000 acres are burned in its wake, and officials say they believe that fire started with arson. The Butte County DA's office says a man has been arrested for allegedly pushing a burning car into a gully. Unfortunately, there's a lot of PTSD in this county because of the campfire and uh, bear fire and other deadly and destructive wildland fires that we've experienced. Meanwhile, in Alberta, Canada, a different fire has damaged up to half of the tourist town of Jasper. And near the border of Oregon and Idaho, the Durkee Fire is the largest active fire in the United States. The Red Cross now helping those who are fleeing from it. Temperatures begin to heat up here this week and maybe some storms. Alex once again joins us. He has our complete forecast. Yep, all of the above, Eric. Heat and humidity will return to southern Wisconsin and those strong chances too. And the wildfires, they impact southern Wisconsin as well. Sometimes you can smell it outside. You can see it also here in our Queen Bee Radio Skycam. That milky white look to the sky, a little bit of haze down towards the ground. That's that smoke that's streaming on those high level winds, the jet stream, all the way from the western United States and Canada right across the Midwest. And we will continue to see that as those weather systems come from the west and if the wildfires continue, which they likely will. Temperatures across southern Wisconsin right now, where they should be for this time of year, upper 70s trade right around 80, but kind of a cooler spot right now. Mineral Point, 75, a little warmer at 81 in Janesville and 81 in Camp Douglas. A little further to the north, up the uh, up the road, up in Black River Falls here at 82 degrees. We've got the 80s in the western part of Dane County, upper 70s from Madison and points off to the east. Humidity levels are very manageable. Dew point at 60, right at that threshold where you just start to feel a little bit of that moisture in the air. And that's going to go up and up and up as we carry on into the weekend. We'll be seeing dew points approaching the tropical factor by the time we get to Sunday. Nothing tropical about tonight. Temperatures sliding through the 60s, clear skies, calm winds. That recipe once again little patchy fog in some of those low-lying and susceptible areas. And Saturday, probably the better of the two. Sunday's going to have nice moments, but Saturday, dry, 85 degrees. Humidity levels will slowly work their way up a bit on Saturday, especially by the time we get to Saturday night. Now, Sunday, I've dropped the high temperatures down just a touch because I do expect more in the way of shower and thunderstorm activity, a few more clouds out there, but the humidity is going to make up for that. When you add the humidity to warm temperatures, it feels warmer than it actually is outside. Even though temperatures will be near normal on Sunday at 82, it's going to feel like the upper 80s. By the time we get 
further into the week, mid to upper 80s, you add the tropical level humidities, it will feel like the low, maybe mid 90s all of next week. So get ready for kind of a steamy and then also a stormy week ahead. Our muggy meter, when you see this yellow line getting up into the very humid range, that occurs at six o'clock on Sunday, stays up there at six o'clock on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. That entire time frame over that 72 to 48 or uh, over the three days to four days, uh, with the dew points up near 70, it's going to feel very uncomfortable across southern Wisconsin. You add more water to it. Sunday, scatter chances, scatter chances Sunday night, scatter chances again Monday night, and scatter chances again Wednesday night. Wednesday night, might, Wednesday night might actually be the best out of all three of those chances for the possibility of stronger storms. Not expecting widespread strong storms right now on Sunday and Monday, but keeping an eye right now on Wednesday. Showers and storms move in Sunday afternoon, scattered. That's again why the highs will be just a little bit lower on Sunday, but humid conditions as well. Scattered showers and thunderstorms to start Monday. Some dry time, but more showers and storms move in as we go Monday night into Tuesday morning, and we keep repeating this pattern much of next week. Water amounts, it could be quite appreciable, especially if our future track models verify by the end of the week, all these repeated bouts of moisture, one, two inches of, of rain, maybe an isolated three inch amount across southern Wisconsin. Look at the highs, mid to upper 80s, high humidity levels. Those high humidity levels keep those lows near 70 on and off storm chances with right now the best chance of that stronger storm Wednesday night as it looks like right now. But the first one weather team will be keeping an eye on all those storm chances for the potential of alert day conditions. All right, Alex, thank you. With a nice weather on the way today and tomorrow, the DNR is reminding boaters to keep an eye on their speed and also watch their wake. DNR officials say a large wake can negatively affect other boaters as well as aquatic ecosystems and can cause shoreline erosion. Some helpful reminders are to keep a safe speed and monitor speed limits, especially in our channels. Respect no wake zones and just be mindful of others in the water around you. Maritime historians in Wisconsin have found an 1893 shipwreck in the waters of Lake Michigan. The Margaret A. Muir was discovered under about 50 feet of water back on May 12th. According to the Wisconsin Underwater Archaeology Association, the ship sank only a few miles off the entrance to Algoma Harbor. The Muir is a 130 foot long three masted ship that was built way back in 1872. It was intended primarily for the Great Lakes grain trade, but it had many diverse cargoes over 21 years before sinking. Maritime historians say the ship was lost to a fierce gale back in 1893. Coming up, how some local dogs are getting into the Olympic spirit just as the summer games get underway in Paris. The story next. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Earn a 40 cent high V fuel saver for every $60 you spend this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's a 40 cent fuel saver for every $60. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday only at High V. It's Blaine's Farm and Fleet's Rewards Member Appreciation Event. While we offer unbeatable deals every day, now through July 31st, we're showing extra appreciation to our rewards members with exclusive deals. Like 40-pound bags of Blaine's Black Oil Sunflower Seeds, $17.99. Rewards members save an extra 2 bucks. 15% off assorted Hopkins Oil Change wrenches, drain pans, and funnels. Rewards members save 20%. Plus, this Sunday from 6 to 9 p.m., rewards members save an extra 10% in store during Blaine's Farm and Fleet's Private Shop Night. Drive into summer with a new Honda. Heading out for a day at the beach or a weekend in the mountains. Make an impression with the unmistakable style of the HRV or turn heads in the sporty Civic. And when you drive a Honda, you're driving with the 2024 Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com Best Value brand. So act now to get an offer you'll love. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or hurry into the Honda Summer Event. Right now, we're running our 60-60-60 sale. So when you purchase your new concrete coating, you get a $60 Visa gift card, plus either 60% off installation or 60-month no interest financing. This is one of our best deals of the year. So visit our website or call the number for your new floor today. 
This famous wood fence from the show Home Improvement had to have boards replaced 13 times in only nine years. Our fences outlast wood three to one and are all backed by our extensive lifetime warranty. This month, save $1,000 on your project. Visit the website or call the number for your new fence today. Nobody wants to put a new roof over their head. It's too expensive. And if they can extend the life of that roof and get five more years or 10 more years, it's a no-brainer. What RoofMax does is it helps people in that they don't have to spend that fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on a new roof. They can spend pennies on the dollar. The RoofMax product was a small percentage of cost of replacing a roof. This is a great financial decision for us as a community. Three days only at High V. Bone in pork shoulder roast, just ninety nine cents a pound. Driscoll strawberries, just a dollar seventy seven for a one pound pack. And High V shredded cheese, just a dollar forty eight. Friday through Sunday at High V. You're watching News Three now at six. After winning their final series against the Cubs, the Brewers are now back home to take on the Miami Marlins tonight. The Marlins come into the series with the second worst record in all of baseball, just 37 and 66. Meanwhile, the Brew crew holding a six game lead atop the NL Central. Tonight, it's Freddie Peralta on the mound for the Brewers against lefty Trevor Rogers for the Marlins. First pitch scheduled for 7 10. More than 10,000 athletes are in Paris for the opening ceremony of the 2024 Olympic Games today. Back here in Madison, one doggy daycare was getting into the spirit. Our Le Ellie La Liberté takes us to the Paw Olympics. Sprint, high jump, and diving are all sports that we see at the Olympics, but here in Madison, there are others competing. Meet Waldo. He is the star of the show. And although this might not be Paris, and this might not be the real Olympic torch, well, I think he's got a medal in his future. Camp K9, a doggy daycare on Madison's east side, is throwing an Olympic Games of its own. You might be wondering what that entails. Our furry athletes are going to compete in high jump, sprint, and diving. More than 40 dogs participated in the games, like Waldo who took home a medal four years ago when Camp K-9 last hosted this event. This year, despite being a senior, is sure giving the young athletes a run for their money. Oh! The dogs aren't the only ones getting dressed up in patriotic gear. I had to do the red, white, and blue thing going on. I got my hair all ready for it, the clothes match. So it all just kind of came together this morning. Staff decked out the facility, complete with its own Olympic rings. I got here early, started setting up, so I'm just ecstatic for it. So we kind of look at day camp as an enrichment activity and when we can mix up their days, mix up what they're doing, um, it benefits them mentally, socially, um, and physically too. Not all the dogs were athletes, but for Waldo, the games were a success, taking home the bronze. Reporting in Madison, Ellie Liberté, News 3 Now. See, those yellow labs always win. They're great <laughs> athletes if they can just stop thinking about food all the time. Final <laughs> Floki was out, he'd be chasing he all the other dogs. Chase them all over the place. <laughs> Great weather out there tonight. Yeah, perfect evening to get outdoors tonight. Temperatures upper 50s right around 60. Enjoy it while you can. It's going to be steamy by the time we get into Sunday with those temperatures approaching 90 degrees with the heat index value. Yeah, enjoy the evening. Thanks for joining us at 6, and we'll be back here tonight. At 10.